Nobody took attendance. You didn't take free attendance. I can sit. I can sit over here. Wow. Don't. I'm gonna make a grand entrance. Good evening, everyone. I am Mayor Shelley Carlson. Moorhead City Council welcomes public input on issues listed on the agenda of or general community interest, time and council permitting. Um, for this evening, it is 5.31 on July 26, 2021. Speakers are limited to three minutes each. If you would like to address the council during the meeting, please fill out a form provided by the city clerk and we will call you up when we get to your item. If comments were submitted to the clerk prior to the meeting via email or phone, those comments will be entered into the record. For more information on participation, please visit the council meetings page on the City of Moorhead website at www.cityofmoorhead.com. All right, and Madam Clerk, could we get a roll call, please? Shelley Dahlquist. Here. Matt Gilbertson. Here. Laura Caroon. Here. Heather Niesmeyer. Here. Deb White. Here. Larry Seldrevold. Here. Chuck Hendrickson. Here. Steve Lindos. Present. And Mayor Shelley Carlson. Here. All right, if everyone could stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Right, moving on to number three, um, any agenda amendments? There are none, Mayor. Well, are we gonna move? We're uh, moving citizens to be heard. Um, next, prior to the, next, consent, prior to the agenda. consent agenda. Okay, all right. So number six will now be moved up before the consent agenda. So that is next then on our, well, yep, so that would be our next item. Hard to go out of order. All right, so we do have somebody who wishes to address the council. Um, oh. No, we're not gonna do the consent agenda. We're doing the citizens addressing the council before the consent agenda. Um, I don't have a name. So if the gentleman would like, would you like to come in and address the council? We'll just have you take the podium and if you wanna say your name and your address, please, and then you will have three minutes to address the council. Thank you, Madam Mayor and City Council. My name is Shane Granzo. I am president of the Building Association for the Moorhead Masonic Lodge at 1815 North 11th Street. And I apologize if I'm not properly educated, but we just heard that there's a, an agenda to rezone uh, 1817 North 11th Street from RMD1 residential moderate density to community commercial. Wondering how that will affect us and what that will do to our property. Okay. Um, I don't know that we have a response right now. I know that that is on our consent agenda. Um, for this is the second reading of that, so there was already a first meeting, um, and I'm looking at our engineers. Do you, if there's any? Yeah, and unfortunately, I'm not able to speak to it. If you'd like yeah. to remove it from the consent agenda, we can certainly put the second reading and get your contact information and follow up and get and put that reading on the next agenda. Why don't we go ahead and, and do that? We can follow up with you, sir. Okay. Um, and we'll remove that then from the consent agenda. Is that what you'd mentioned? That's, yeah, we'd just remove it uh, upon the motion to uh, approve the consent agenda. And that's item number 10? Item number 11. Item number I believe, 11. wait. No, I believe it's number 10. I'm sorry, number yeah. 10. Okay, so would it, would it not be on the agenda for tonight or it would just be? We Next would, let me see, Kat, we'd just be removing it and then adding it to the, yeah, coming back to it at a future meeting. Okay, so it's completely removed and that would be a, okay. That should be part of the motion, correct? correct. Yeah. 
Great. I'm just looking, sir, to make sure that we have your contact information. So uh, somebody will contact you from the city and provide you with some of that information. And number 10 is going to be removed from our agenda. So we will probably put that on the next city council agenda. And do you know what date that would be, ma'am? Would that be the, the first? It would be the, the second, the ninth. It would be August 9th. Thank you so very much. Yep, thank you. All right, so number 10 has been removed um, from the agenda completely. And moving on to the consent agenda, do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda um, with the removal of number 10? I move, oh, Go ahead. I move to approve the consent agenda with item 10 removed to be addressed at a future city council meeting. Second. Did you get that, Madam Clerk? I believe it was Niesemeyer with the approval and Dahlquist with the second. And uh, Lindas with the third. Um, <laughs> uh, all right. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, consent agenda has been approved. Looking for a motion to approve the minutes from July 12th. So moved, Deb White. Do I have a second? Second, Lisa Meyer. Second. Okay, we have White and Lindas. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, and we have already done citizens addressing the council, so uh, moving on to project, our engineering project update, and I will turn it over to Mr. Trowbridge. Thank you, Mayor and uh, members of council. I think this is, yeah, can you hear me? Okay. Okay, so this will be a general update on the construction projects that we have going on. And I've just got these in order from our engineering project number. That's, the, that, that's all I've done with this here. But so the first project that I'm talking about is our sanitary sewer uh, brick sewer lining project. This is actually something we awarded the contract last summer. And projects like this, sometimes we try to do them over the winter. We also knew this was very complex, so we gave the contractor a choice of doing it up through December of this year. And so that's why it's starting now, even though we awarded the contract more than 12 months ago now. All right, and so the work actually got started, oops, the work, uh, it, it's got 7,000 feet of these large diameter brick sewers in the old part of the city, uh, right in the downtown area. These sewers actually used to be a combined sewer system. Back in the day, we didn't have a, so a stormwater system. Everything went into the sewer. It was just the sewer, sanitary sewer or stormwater, and then the water was discharged into the river. So that's, you know, from back in the 30s and 40s, that's the way it was done. And then we built a sewer plant and started treating it. And then we did sewer separation projects to separate that. And because this sewer was designed to handle, uh, to, to handle that stormwater flow, this picture on the front kind of shows what it is. It was a very large pipe because it had to handle large rain events but it also has a very un unique shape. The bottom of it has a small pipe in it that you don't really see in this picture. And then you got that large pipe and it's a, it was made in the days when labor was cheaper. So it was actually built out of bricks and mortar. And it, it's actually a really good sewer design. It can last a long time, but when it does fail, it just kind of keeps going. The bricks just keep falling in. And since this is our biggest sewer pipe, it, it drains a large part of the city. We're doing a proactive measure to line this pipe before we have more substantial failures to it. And so it's, it's just complex to do. We do a lot of sewer linings, but those are the standard, you know, eight, nine inch pipe. 
and those they have a, a pipe you just you buy it it comes the, the the contractor just starts the project and they go this is a project where they have to start and stop and wait for a while and that's because they first needed to set up a bypass pump and pipe all of the, they have to bypass pump all of the wastewater around the pipe they're going to be working on then they clean it out and then they have to do a special televising scanning so that they get very accurate precise measurements on the pipe then they send it to a manufacturer and say okay make a liner that'll fit this pipe and then it takes a few weeks for that to happen and so we're still bypass pumping to keep the sewer clean and the pipe arrives and then it's going to take usually takes a couple weeks to install the pipe if you really have time after the meeting tonight you might actually if you're interested they will be installing some of this on 10th street tonight they they do it in the evening hours also because during the heat of the day the pipe cures faster than they want and so they they need the cooler temperatures so what it is is it looks kind of like a fire hose almost like a really big fire hose and they they impregnate it with a resin that will harden and cure and then they inflate it inside the pipe so it takes on the shape of the pipe and then they have to wait for it to cure and then they can send another device down the pipe to reopen the service connections to it so they cut the new the new openings to it and the obviously the benefit of this this is our largest pipe it tends to be the deepest pipe if we had to dig this up there'd be a 25 foot deep hole down these streets it would it would take easily months to do and these roads would have to be totally redone the cost is much less trying to do something like this and the impacts are less there are some minor areas they have to dig up to do some work around manholes and in order to minimize some traffic impacts they did a little bit where they at some intersections they ran that bypass piping underground and then patched over the top of it but otherwise it's it's much less invasive so as i said on 10th street tonight they're going to be working on installing the liner so that part of it is about half done right now and hopefully within another week they'll be done in the area of 10th street the other part of this project area that they that's under this contract is the 6th street from main to 4th avenue and 4th avenue from 6th to 8th street so that still has the bypass piping in place they're waiting to get the pipe and they should be installing that starting about august 9th and it should take about two more weeks for them to finish that area so we have been working with some of the affected businesses just so that you know they they know that they'll have access uh, during construction and so the the pictures that i included here the one on the left is of the bypass pumping that's in the vicinity of 6th street and 3rd avenue south and then the other one was from the first portion of the lining install about a week ago on 10th street so that's something that they're going to be doing again tonight the next project this is another one of our higher profile projects 30th avenue south from 14th to 20th street and then we also had an overlay of 14th street south from 30th to 35th avenue south this project uh, was a little simpler when we started than it was uh, shortly after uh, when we actually got ready to go we were notified by excel that they wanted to replace a lot of gas main along there and new star also indicated that they might be doing a little bit of work on their pipeline crossing and so we've been coordinating closely with them and uh, that is mostly affecting that area between 14th and 15th street which our contractor just made the switch over uh, so the, this project was broken into two different phases because this is a critical skip ahead one slide and then come back this is a critical commercial area it's really hard to maintain business access during construction so we had to phase the work to try to do that and maintain traffic at the same time so they just switched over the first phase was 17th to 20th street 
it's all paved. They still had some sidewalk work to do, which they were doing today, and, and they should finish that up within a couple of days, and then, and then they'll be out of the way on that stretch, and then they'll turn their full attention on the piece from 14th to 17th Street. So for properties that have businesses in that stretch, the way that they'll have to be accessed from is actually gonna be from 17th Street. So we have a detour to bring traffic. If you're west of this, you'd have to go down to Bellsley, over to 17th and up 17th. The business is on the north side, you would continue on 17th and come around from that side. And then the ones that are on the south side of 30th, we actually had to build a temporary gravel access road in the boulevard so that we can maintain access to them. So it was a fairly complicated traffic control plan. So this project started construction in early May. As I said, we had two phases. The uh, first phase is basically done, should be done hopefully by the end of the week. Uh, and then the next phase is getting started now. And this project originally, the plan was to have it done by August 31st, uh, at least open to traffic then. And it's, we're probably two to three weeks behind that schedule. So it's, it's gonna run into September. Uh, we'll see. The weather at least has still been favorable. So if we don't have any more utility complications, uh, it, it, they should be able to finish it up by mid to late September. And then this just shows a couple of the pictures. The 14th Street Mill and Overlay, I think turned out really nice. And the, you can see the concrete pavement, the new concrete pavement will be a significant improvement over the condition that the road was in prior to that. And then I also threw in a picture of the, of the temporary access road that was being built for the properties on the, uh, along 30th Avenue South. At 12th Avenue South from 4th Street to Main. This one's a bit of the good news. That one is done and it is open to traffic. So this one, the only drawback is it's not 100% done. It's open to traffic. The part we had awarded the bid for is done. We do still have a railroad crossing. Our initial goal had been to get that done this year, but if you ever want to find out lots of historical right-of-way issues and where things can go wrong, this railroad crossing had an incredibly complex uh, history. It actually predated the railroad, which gave us a little more leverage when we were negotiating with them. Um, but we also had only ever platted the north half of the right-of-way, not the south half. We just assumed we had it, I, th I guess. So, But it was originally platted in like 1882, the railroad asked our permission to cross it in 1887. We vacated the right-of-way in 1895, and then nothing got platted again until about 1950s. And ever since then, we've had a road there, and we didn't exactly have the, the details worked out. But we're working that out with the railroad. The, we've, each party has reviewed the agreement, and it's now back in the railroad's court, and we're hoping to have that agreement completed this fall which will allow us to construct the crossing next year. We will time that to happen after the underpass is open so that we don't have as much of the traffic impacts as we had this year. So that's what our plan is proceeding forward on that one. So this was a contract that we led it last year, did the mill and <coughs> overlay uh, from 4th to 20th. We saved the reconstruction from 20th to Southeast Main for this year. And then again, the railroad crossing, which we had hoped to do at the same time as this portion of reconstruction, will go into 2022. And this is another one that had some additional utility work that cropped up after. Uh, I mean, we, we, during design, we do talk to the utility companies and they hadn't actually planned on replacing their gas main there, but uh, due to some of the difficulties we experienced last year, uh, XL did decide this year they were going to remove and replace the gas main along 12th Avenue as well. So that was something that we didn't know about until April of this year. But despite that, the, contract, the contractor did get the project done on time. 
as I said, this one is open to traffic now, and all we have to do is uh, time the railroad crossing reconstruction at some point next year. And here's a couple of pictures. You can see on the left is Excel Energy, uh, their subcontractor doing some of their gas main work. And then on the right, uh, that picture was taken while they were doing the pavement marking, so just a few days before the road was open to traffic. Okay, the next one is 2nd Avenue North and 16th Street North. This is a project that we had actually planned to do in 2022, but we advanced it up one year uh, due to the uh, adjacent construction at the Van A site. They wanted to have diagonal parking on street, and it made more sense for us to do one street project than it did for them to widen the road and just do parking and then have us come back the next year and try to do the rest of the road. So we end up with a much better project this way. And that project is proceeding pretty nicely. So they, uh, they did, we did that in two phases also to try to maintain traffic because there are some active businesses on 16th Street South. So we did 2nd Avenue and a little ways south on 16th as one phase and then the rest of it was a second phase. And so this one started construction in May, about the middle of May. And 2nd Avenue is basically done. All they have to do is the wear course. That'd be the final layer of asphalt. And on 16th Street South, they were paving the base course last week, and they should be starting the sidewalk uh, tomorrow. And that's the sidewalk that's going to be right in front of the Vanny building on 16th Street. The, this project is basically on schedule. Uh, they, they should be able to get done by August 31st. The next project I'll talk about is uh, another North Moorhead project, 10th Avenue North, 15th Street, and 16th Street. So this shows a project map of it. This, this project had a lot of road rehabilitation where we try to keep the curb and gutter and then re remove and replace all of the pavement. And then it also had a couple of blocks worth of mill and overlay, which is what we prefer to do as long as the road is suitable to do that with. Uh, less invasive. This was another project that had uh, a lot of utilities that were outside of our project. So they were, it, was, it was done, the utility companies were trying to do this in advance of our project, so we coordinated with them. Excel Energy had uh, small diameter gas mains on both sides of the street that they came in and removed and replaced. And Moorhead Public Service also had a water main on 15th Street that they replaced. And so both of the utilities, all of the utility work has been done and we've been following behind with the pavement work. Uh, we did get 15th Street, the base course on 15th Street and 10th Avenue was paved last week. And they're starting to work now on the 16th Street. So by the end of this week, they'll be working on the, uh, they're removing the pavement and, and starting to work on the subgrade work on that. So this project is it's pretty close to being on schedule. We think that by about August 31st, they should be done paving. And so we're, we'll, we'll see where that comes in. But despite all that utility work that we had to coordinate with, it, it appears that that project is on schedule. So this shows a, uh, an example of what was done. So again, it's a rehab. We try not to take out much of the curb and gutter because it, it really increases the cost of the project when we have to do that. But we do have at some driveways, we'll remove and replace curb or places where it wasn't draining well. Um, and at, we also have to do a lot of ADA improvements typically to, to upgrade things. And then, uh, then the last picture on the right there is 15th Street before they paved it. So that was when they had the, the, they were working on the grading and base of it. Yeah, the final wear course project. So that one, we had three different subdivisions that we had work uh, to do the final wear course on. And so just as a refresher, when we do a ho new housing subdivision, we try to do the utilities one year and the paving the next. Uh, that helps allow some trench settlement because just in order to get a project done and get the builders in so they can build houses, you know, ideally we'd 
not pave the street for several years, but that's just not practical. Uh, our clay soils take a while to settle out. It's really hard to get them compacted properly. And so usually what happens is over service trenches, so they, the mains aren't as much trouble, but the service trenches that run the sewer and water services to the house, those tend to have settlement that takes a few years to show up. And as a result, you end up getting little dips and people get dissatisfied with the, the pavement. So what we do is we pave most of it, but we leave the last lift called, called the wear course. We leave that last inch and a half to two inches of bituminous off. And we wait up to five years, and then we come in and we do that last bit of paving. And then on top of that, uh, we might sometimes deal with a little bit of sidewalk. We usually don't have much to do in the new subdivisions. In this case, uh, in the Stone Mill Estates area, and there, there were some changes that Parks Department requested because it facilitated their maintenance. And so we added a couple of wider ped ramps, and that's what the picture on the left is. Uh, if you're familiar with Stone Mill Estates, there's two ponds, and they have trails around both of them, and we wanted to have a ped connection that went directly between that was wide enough for the city to just plow and go straight across. It, would, it makes their operations a lot easier. And frankly, the pedestrians were kind of doing it anyway. They were crossing there, and so uh, just just makes it easier for everybody. And then the picture on the right is from the Horizon Shores that shows the, the paving was completed in that subdivision. Uh, the current schedule, uh, so again, I said Horizon Shores has been paved. Stone Mill Estates should get paved later this week. Village Green 6th should get paved tomorrow, actually. So, so that one's getting done, and the final completion date, or the completion date was August 31st, and they should easily be done ahead of that. Yeah, so the 15th to 17th Street, 14th Avenue, and 18th Avenue, this was our largest local street project for the year in South Moorhead. Uh, so we had from 12th Avenue to 20th Avenue South, we were doing uh, 15th, 16th, and 17th Street, and we also had a couple of the avenues. It had a mix of mostly mill and overlay, but we also had some rehab, and we had uh, about a two block long stretch of reconstruction. And this is another project that we had a lot of utility coordination to do. Uh, Moorhead Public Service uh, was replacing the water mains, so they had a lot of cast iron water mains along here. And Excel Energy also decided to replace uh, a lot of their natural gas mains along there. So work started, we let the utilities come in and do their work, and then as a street would get done, so usually it would be Excel would do a street, Moorhead Public Service would follow them, and then we would follow them. And so we've been trying to proceed uh, in a pretty logical pattern on this. And Moorhead Public Service is mostly done. I think they've got only about a block or two left. Um, XL Energy is done. And we are close to 75% done on the curb replacement that we were doing. And we're about 25% done on the paving that we're doing. August 31st is the completion date. Probably not going to hit that for everything out there. Uh, we think we might, but we shouldn't be more than two weeks behind schedule. So it's, we're not too far off of it. And when we have projects like that, you'll notice pretty much every one of these projects had August 31st as a desired completion date. It's usually because we're trying to make sure we're not impacting the school district, the buses and, and everything. So it's nice to get done by then. So any project that carries into September will be in contact with the school district so they know what the status of the projects is so that they can make their, their route plans accordingly. So this is a project, uh, these, these pictures, the left picture is some traffic control around a, a, a hole that Moorhead Public Service had dug to do work uh, on their water main project. And then the picture on the right is just showing some of the work that was ongoing on 17th Street as of last week. And then our largest project is the Southeast Main 20th, 21st project. And 
The progress that's going on on that project is pretty similar. We had a presentation to you back in May where we talked about the schedule of work that would happen this year, and they're pretty much on track with what they had said at that time. So uh, this is definitely a very large project that we've got going, and they did get the Otter Tail Valley track open to traffic open to train traffic on, uh, it was June 9th, I believe, was when the crossover happened on that. Um, Ames is about 80% done with the uh, construction work on it. And right now, they think they'll have the BNSF bridge, the last bridge done sometime in September to October. And so about mid-October is when BNSF should be showing up to install the track across that bridge. And so then hopefully by October 31st, we will be able to see the BNSF trains on their permanent track. And following that is when they would do the night excavation to get the, to accelerate getting some of that stuff out of there and done. And then they'll work on retaining walls over the winter. And the final road construction should be able to happen most of it will likely happen next year as early in the year as they can get in and do it. It's possible that some of that work will happen this year. I don't know that it would be enough to open anything to traffic, but they will be working on areas that they can. So I don't know that they'd get all the way to the intersection, but they'd be getting done what they can this year to make the, the work that remains to be done next year less. And then, yeah, the Y construction would follow after the underpass gets opened up. That was all I had. Do you have any questions? Thank you, Mr. Turbridge. Are there any questions? Uh, Council Member Dahlquist. I don't have any questions, but I just want to say thank you so much for pre presenting this. So we do have answers to give residents when they give us a call or send us an email. Thank you. Are there comments or questions? Uh, Councilmember White. Thanks, Tom. Uh, and yeah, I also thank you. And I, I am amazed that with all of these projects, that there's only one of them that there's maybe a little bit behind schedule. It's so impressive. And especially thanks to everybody for working in this uh, this uh, extended heat that we've had. Uh, the only thing that I thought of, the, I, I know I've asked you this, but just so we could get it on the out to the public too, I know I've had people ask me about what's in Woodlawn, and that's also part of that same sewer the, the lining project, so that's, um, if you wanna just touch on that a little bit too. Yeah, and so the, the sewer lining project, that's one that caught people a little bit off guard for a couple of reasons. One, we awarded the contract last year, <laughs> and it just had a long time frame to allow the best bids from the contractor planning-wise. And the other is, that's not an assessed project, so we don't have public hearings that really get some of that information out to the residents. So We've been getting some information out, but that's kind of a lesson learned on that project. Usually we do these projects and they're not nearly that impactful. And we'll have a next phase next year that will be a lot, a lot more impactful than this one because it's gonna be 8th Street from uh, Main Avenue to 1st Avenue North. That's kind of our busiest intersection. So we're gonna have to be doing it in that area next year, but uh, we're, you know, we're optimistic that you know this this is a good project that having succeed successfully gotten this part of it done it leads us into next year very well but but yeah that uh, that one in the woodline area it's six blocks long it's got an L shape and and it's kind of one of those that you start doing the work on it and people don't don't even really understand what you're doing why are you laying these pipes down the middle of the road and and you bury it in some places, you cover it over in others, and trying to set it up in a way that allows people to get in and out of their driveways or at least close to their homes, it can be kind of challenging. Well, and even I, it was the, through the park, too. That's what I had some people ask me. That's just a, it's just the bypass, right? So I, there's a pipe that goes right through the <coughs> middle of the park. So I've had folks ask me about that one, too. But no. yeah. Yeah. Great. Thanks. City Manager Molly. If I could add, a little dangerous when I'm poking my nose into engineering stuff, so I'll be careful. Um, so, you know, if, you know, typically these roads would be torn up and then the work would be done. Um, and that is very disruptive. So what's being tried here with the liner is 
the work is still happening, except for it's happening underground. We just don't see it. If that helps the way we think about it, and um, from a cost efficiency and impact, it's actually um, you know, a pretty thoughtful approach by the team. All right, any other questions or comments? Council Member Hendrickson. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Tom, I wanna go back to that 12th Avenue South, and you say uh, BNSF has railroad crossing improvements. Is that gonna um, close down 12th Avenue? Yes, and that's why we'll, we will wait to do that until uh, the Southeast Main underpass is open. Uh, but yeah, what, what will happen at that railroad crossing is we're going to upgrade it to be quiet zone compatible. Uh, so there'll be a, should have a median. It'll get new railroad signals and gates. We'll get the bike path extended all the way across. So it'll have a nice ped crossing that it's never had before. Uh, we're even going to do some work in 20th Street, and we're going to try to raise it a little bit so that, because right now if, you've, if you drive over that crossing, it's pretty steep and abrupt. I know uh, Matt Bus has had some issues with it, and so it'll be a much better crossing when it's done, but yeah, there's no way we could do that under traffic, so it'll get closed for a period of time when that happens. Do, do you know the length? And this is, I'm coming from personal because I bring kids to hockey and that I use that 12th Avenue oh. quite a bit. And I know a lot of people use that to yeah. bring their kids to that side of the... Yeah, I would say that it, it would have to be closed for at least a couple of months just for the, because we got to time it, get BN in. Um, and you know, right now what they have is five tracks at that crossing. Uh, good news is there will only be three, we think, when it's done. BN is, uh, they've tentatively agreed to remove the two easterly of the tracks. Um, and so then, but then they also, they also, BNSF crews have to also be the ones that install the signals and gates. Our contractor would be the one that does the road improvements. And so you have to coordinate that and have these two different entities work together. So it can be a little challenging to do that, but I just with just the road construction alone in good condition should take a month to do because it'll be concrete. So probably closer to six weeks just for that. And then timing and coordination with the BN work. Two months would be a pretty aggressive schedule. So. Okay, and I just wanted to mention too, I wanna echo that, um, yeah, it, a lot of projects going, and you're pretty much, you know, on time. A couple projects are kind of behind a little bit, but um, yeah, I, I think it's probably been pretty good working conditions, except for the heat. But yeah. so it's yeah. kind of kept things on on schedule. So, so I appreciate the report and appreciate you giving it tonight. Thanks. Further, any further questions or comments? Seeing none. Thank you so much, and I believe that the CIP is on the the city website. Yes, I, what, so yeah, it, what's on there probably still says, is it still the 20 to 24? Yeah, because we've been, we've been working on our update for uh, the 22, and we hope to have that completed pretty soon. Thank you so much. That's a way for the public to be able to access this information and not necessarily go to council meeting minutes and, and look it up and, and all of that. So thank you all for your work. All right, moving on to... I guess number 13 on the agenda, more in public service, and I will turn it over to you, Mr. Schmidt. Good evening, uh, Mayor and Council Members. Uh, just wanted to provide a, a brief update, if possible, on the uh, mandatory water restrictions that we put out last Tuesday. Um, just a little background. On the 16th of July, we were provided information from the state of Minnesota Department of Natural Resources that there was gonna be a statewide mandate to um, look at your water supplies, <clears throat> water supply plans, excuse me, and move into some type of phase that you have, that more public service has in their plan for mandatory water restrictions. So after staff looked into that and where we were at, we provided a, uh, a mandatory watering restriction that was put out on Tuesday. Again, very similar to things we've done in the past when it was voluntary water restrictions, odd even day uh, watering, again, no issues with gardening. Um, you can water that as you need. Again, any newly planted um, sod or um, seeded lawns, those can be watered as well because those have to be, um, 
they need to grow and, and need some time need a lot of water at that point in time to grow so um, again same with shrubs and trees as well too so just wanted to provide a quick update to you on that um, again we're watching everything very closely um, with with the continued drought that we're having I think the Department of Natural Resources had started when we initially got the notice they the state was in about a 50 percent statewide um, drought um, since that time they're up to about 72 percent so again with the continued heat that we've been talking about this evening that is continuing to cause um, every uh, water municipal utility or utility in the state of Minnesota that delivers water to be very cautious on what is going on we're watching how much we utilize out of the aquifers again we're also watching how much is coming out of the red as well too so um, with that I will open it up for any questions that you have thank you mr. Schmidt any questions comments uh, council member wait Thank you, Mr. Schmidt, and I appreciate you coming here, and, I, and I'm glad we're being proactive about this. Uh, the one thing I thought, if you could talk a little bit about the, the river levels. I know I was at a presentation yesterday, and at least it looks like compared to, say, in the 80s uh, during that drought period or the 30s, that we're actually not, you know, we're not, it's not too low, but we also have a much larger population. So if you want to talk a little bit about that, and, and sure. also, are we drawing, are we right now just drawing from the red, or are we taking anything out of the Buffalo Aquifer? Sure, good questions. Um, so again, back in the 80s or the early 30s, I can't really attest to those because I wasn't around. Um, but um, it, we are watch, watching and monitoring that very closely. Uh, currently, the river's at about 13.8 feet, um, and usually we're talking about how high is it gonna get, and here we're talking how low is it gonna get. Um, with that, we probably have a good two feet um, in the river before we have to really start being concerned or watching what's going on. So again, that could change our, our phases of our water restriction plans as we move forward as well. Um, currently, we're still taking roughly about 80% of the water from the red, and then roughly about 20%. And really, we're doing that right now from a temperature perspective. Um, the, the water in the red typically at this time of year is starting to climb up there. Well, in late June, we actually hit 75, 77, which makes our treatment process a little bit more difficult. So we had to add a little bit more aquifer water to that or well water to that. So that's why um, we're utilizing the, the aquifer as much as we are currently. It's a, it's a condition of the temperature in the red. Uh, along with that, we are still utilizing the aquifers and we're watching how much is coming out of there and working very closely on that as, on a daily basis as well too. Any other questions or comments? Uh, Council Member Lindas. Thank you, Mayor Carlson. Um, can you comment maybe on the fact that we're a, a wider community? It's not just um, Moorhead, but all, we also have Fargo that uses utilizes the red. Yeah, so a couple of good points to that. Yes, um, City of Fargo also uses the red. Remember right, East Grand and Grand Forks also utilize it. So there's a lot of cities along the red that do utilize that for their water supply. Um, I think they're watching it as well. Um, Fargo does have the ability to pull out of the Cheyenne River. Um, we don't have that. That's why we're utilizing the aquifers, of course. Um, I mean, again, with the rain, if, if and when we get some rain, um, even it coming from the Detroit Lakes area, that does go through the Otter Tail River system, and that does tie into the red. So we do have access to that water as well if there is rain. And we did see some of that this past weekend as well, too. Um, uh, also on that point, we do supply the water to Dilworth as well too. So that's why you saw Dilworth in our press release as well. Um, we wholesale supply to them. They don't do the treatment process. We do it for them and then they utilize their distribution system to get it to their, their residents. So the, the question I guess is, do we need to worry if we're restricting our water usage and Fargo doesn't? Or is there some coordination that is gonna occur? I, um, yeah, I'm just double checking with Marker. He knows the details better than I do. Um, um, they have put in voluntary restrictions already as well. Um, they haven't gone to the mandates yet. Um, it is a concern. We got to keep a good eye on it. Uh, I would suspect Mark, uh, Mark knows a lot of the, the people in the water treatment plant in Fargo, and I'm sure he's having communications with them. Hard to say. Hard to say if it, it's going to cause more problems than not. Any other questions or comments? All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Schmidt. Thank you. Have a good evening. Moving on to number 16, Mayor and Council Reports. Do any Council Member have any reports to give? Council Member Hendrickson. Uh, just a quick one. 
Um, the solid waste or the solid waste transfer station. We're going to have a groundbreaking on uh, August third at one o'clock. I'm happy about it because I've been working on this thing for seven years. So um, it's an exciting time if you're into solid waste like I am. So so that's um, and I think they're having shuttles out there. I don't know if there's enough parking. So oh, the shuttles will pick up at the courthouse, and I think it's listed. Some I think it's I don't know if it's on our website, Dan or. Yep, it is, and uh, we can send that information out again, the invite. So get us, get excited about solid waste. Um, and second thing too, I just wanna give a shout out to the Moorhead Blues, they won the subsection, they're headed to state this weekend. So that's all I have, thanks. Thank you, Councilmember Hendrickson. Uh, Councilmember White. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first, I wanted to thank the United Liberian Association of North Dakota for um, allowing us to participate in their Liberian Independence Day celebration. And thank you to Mayor Carlson for letting me go there in her place. Um, it, was, it was a wonderful event, and um, it was just great to be able to celebrate with them on that, this important occasion. And I wanted to mention a couple of things um, regarding the FM Pride Week. So. We mentioned before that Human Rights Commission, uh, Commission will be doing the Pride Parade and we're hoping that some of the council members will join us. And so that parade is uh, August 14th. Uh, it starts at two o'clock, but the lineup will be a little bit before then. And so if you are willing to march in the parade, um, Josh Huffman is gonna send out some information about that and just let Josh know so we can have a head count of how many people are gonna be there for the parade. And then um, the day before that is Pride in the Park, and we are staffing a booth. Human Rights uh, Coalition is, or uh, the Human Rights Commission is staffing a booth, but we uh, have a couple of time slots where we would like to get one more person. And so, if any of the council members are interested, we're looking for somebody that could do it from 12:30 to 2:30 or 2:30 to 4:30. And so that's at Island Park on uh, Saturday, August 14th. And again, you can let Josh know. I think he's going to include that in an email to all the council members. Thank you. Yep. Other council members, uh, council member Seljavold. Uh, the Morehead Community Fund uh, Committee met and uh, it's good that the citizens should be aware that there is a chance that you can donate to the city on a number of projects because some of them are not, are not met by the city budget. There's in the, in the form had article about the two parks that are trying to be built and so there is a catalog that you can request or go to the website and and we have you, if you have neighbors that meet on uh, the night to unite, I guess it's called, you may wanna to talk to your neighbors about maybe going in together, donating to the park that's, that are to, to be built or buying a bench or something. So there's opportunities that you can think about giving to the city and, and making your gift last. All right, thank you, uh, Council Member Lindas. I think uh, Council Member Seljavold, they could also adopt their, um, you know, fire hydrants that are around them. A lot True. of things to do in the Unite Tonight. Um, uh, so a couple things, uh, Council Member White and myself and um, uh, City Manager Molly were at the Resiliency Task Force uh, meeting this afternoon, um, and there's a lot of good activation um, going on in terms of um, really engaging um, the different communities, especially marginalized communities in our, in our area. Uh, so that's a good um, segue into the next thing is the New Roots um, Farming Cooperative. When you're talking about donation opportunities, um, they had an unfortunate event. So New Roots um, uh, is a farm incubator. Um, primarily it's serving 16 um, new farmers and primarily um, new Americans, immigrants um, are involved in this and they're like to be organic and um, grow um, food, not just for themselves, but also to sell and, and create small businesses. And they had a um, unfortunate event where they had some pesticides or herbicides that drifted over and took out a lot of their um, produce. And so they're working with the Department of Agriculture, but they, they need some help. And so there's a GoFundMe page um, that um, you can use to donate and also learn more about um, what they do. And they're not really trying to lay blame because they understand that even conventional farmers are having really hard problems um, with their um, farming enterprise um, this year, especially. Um, but they could use some help. So there's that. Thank you. Councilmember Dahlquist. Thank you, Mayor. 
And I think uh, you will probably do clean up after this, but I want to thank you so much for, for getting us together to do the Habitat for Humanity. I don't know if anybody noticed how buff we are now. <laughs> um, and also the Night to Unite that's coming up. And if you want any of us to come visit, you should give the city a call. And uh, we can't probably make all of them, but we will try. All right, thank you. And Council Member Niesemeyer. I want to second um, Council Member Hendrickson's shout out to Solid Waste. Um, I know a lot of people when I've been visiting with them about the Clay County Resource Recovery Facility and the groundbreaking that's coming up on August 3rd at 1 p.m. They have no idea what it is. And so I highly recommend that you um, just Google Clay County uh, Facility, Resource Recovery Facility. They've got a great video out there. Um, Again, um, Council Member Hendrickson mentioned that the um, Clay County Courthouse is gonna have shuttles out there since parking is limited um, and it's in North Moorhead. It'd be great to see a bunch of community members out there for the groundbreaking. I also wanna do a shout out to um, Shannon Thompson. Um, for those of you who wanna know more about solid waste, she does um, an FM extra um, excerpt, uh, it's called Trash Talk, which is pretty great um, every couple of months. And so if you wanna get to know about resource recovery and trash, Shannon does a pretty good excerpt. And so I encourage you to just check it out. Um, I also wanna echo the Women's Build thank you because uh, Mayor Carlson, it was a fantastic experience, hot, humid, and fabulous. And so thank you for getting us together. It was a wonderful Tuesday morning with fabulous people, thank you. Absolutely. Any Councilmember Gilbertson or Karoon? No updates, okay. Yes, um, the, the Habitat for Humanity, um, it was a women build event that um, I was asked to invite community leaders. Um, we had a kind of a limited number of spots, but uh, Council Members White, uh, Dahlquist, and Nisa Meyer were able to join, and so I appreciated their help, and as did Habitat for Humanity. Um, it was hot that day, and um, I got to use power tools, which was really cool. Um, probably not cool for the people around me. They might have been a little bit nervous. Um, also, thank you to Lisa Borgen, uh, Gretchen Knein, Amber Gustafson, and Christine uh, Renich for also helping out. Um, I wanted to thank uh, Patrick Kirby from the Do Gooders Conference, who invited myself and Senator Nicole Kapoolman and Representative Ruth Buffalo to be on a panel that was moderated by um, former Mayor Delray Williams, and we talked a lot about about how nonprofits work with the city. Um, you know, we don't have a lot of necessarily money to give out, but we work in collaboration and coordination with nonprofits and their great partnerships um, that we talked about to the nonprofits that were attending the Do-Gooders Conference. Um, we had a, a Ward 2 meeting with the mayor. Uh, unfortunately, Ward 3, I think that Ward 2 might have had more people there. Um, so it was a very good, uh, very intense discussion. Um, so that was um, good, and we're gonna be doing some follow-up um, with a. Uh, some neighborhoods in Ward 2 to um, um, help get some questions addressed. Um, also wanted to do a thank you out to President uh, Ann Blackhurst for pulling together uh, the presidents and the city and the school, school board um, to kind of initiate and start communications between all of the, the entities um, to really be able to tell, tell the story about Moorhead better. Um, that was a, um, a real great idea of President Blackhurst. And thank you to President Kraft. Uh, he and I met for coffee and had some um, great communication about how Concordia also can work in partnership specifically with the city of Moorhead. Um, thank you to Doug Restmeyer with DF Beverage. Um, he was able, I was able to get a really unique tour of uh, DS Beverage. Um, all the storage rooms that they have for the beverages in the community was fairly astounding. And they are doing, as, as you all know, since we approved, they are increasing um, their, their footprint in Moorhead. And we just wanna say thank you to DS Beverage for continuing to um, increase their business here. This is very vital for our community to re not only retain, but grow our businesses. Um, as far as diversion world is concerned, uh, met with the Assistant Secretary of the Army Corps of Engineers, Jamie Pinkman. Um, it's good to know that he has a background working for the, um, the Bush Foundation, so he is, fully aware of and immersed into uh, Minnesota and knowing 
kind of what our challenges are here. We tour the diversion inlet structure, um, and as far as the diversion is, we're working on lands acquisition. That is probably one of the biggest priorities we have. And our P3 project was awarded, but it has not yet been signed. So that will be either in August or September. We're waiting for that. And last but not least, Cash Mob Moorhead is going to be at Thai Orchid tomorrow. So please, everyone, join me sometime during the day at Thai Orchid and help that business. Um, they are still needing funds and money, as are all of our restaurants, and they are a great um, asset here in Moorhead. So, all right, that's all I have. Thank you, Mayor. The, um, so Council Member Lindas had mentioned the Adopt a Hydrant, and I just couldn't help but uh, jump on all sorts of different initiatives that we've got to help beautify and uh, improve and uh, inv invest your time into um, the city. Um, on our website, cityofmoorhead.com, if you just look under the volunteering tab, there are opportunities to um, adopt a street, adopt a section of the red, adopt a flower bed, adopt a park, adopt a stormwater pond. It just goes on and on and on. And so just a thank you to, you know, the hundred um, groups and individuals that do a little bit in their neighborhoods to make uh, this place so strong. And then that can also be enhanced. I mean, it, this is the idea behind citizenship that it's, if I'm being honest, we don't just pay our taxes, we actually have to do more. <laughs> so. Um, that's the difference between a uh, citizen and a customer, frankly. And so um, thank you to everybody that just makes the neighborhoods and uh, this uh, place of Moorhead so great, which leads me right into the, the night to night event, which is really incredible. We've got um, close to 60 parties uh, and the more are coming um, across town. And so that evening, when you do register, a police officer will stop in and say hi and then you know, um, you know, there's a good chance maybe a council member or two. We're going to share all of that information with you later this week, along with um, just things that are happening in all the city departments and uh, um, goings on. So you'll have, if, if anybody has questions, hopefully you'll have the, some specifics and information to share to help generate um, that uh, excitement. And uh, so, I mean, um, we, there's just no question that um, Moorhead is just made up of just very strong um, neighborhoods and neighbors, um, this network. I mean, just 60 and growing um, of these of these um, fun fun parties. So to register a block party, um, Leanne Wallen, our community policing officer, uh, she's really good. Uh, her number direct is 299-5143. Um, and then email would, anyway, if you, just give a call uh, anywhere in Moorhead and, and we'll get you set up for your party. And then, and then uh, closing the, you know, we, last week was design week around the city's comprehensive plan. And, um, you know, we went to, we had a, a design festival here. There were a number of workshops, walk shops, focus groups, different kind of gatherings um, where folks had gotten together. I was really impressed with how positive a lot of the conversations were around it and came out with a lot of uh, excitement. The comprehensive plan is really uh, an important document because it is the official policy making document around land use for future growth and development. Um, there, you know, we talk about these uh, comprehensive plans being made to last 10 years, but they actually last 15 to 20 years because they're expensive. And it's that community engagement and that whole piece that, that is actually um, the part that gets to be quite a bit. And so we're meeting in person again, which, is, which was really great. So we're finishing, there's four phases. We're just finishing the second phase where we have a, a working vision and a mission, the value and some kind of topical goals. And now we're entering that kind of that strategic focus area, strategic kind of specifics as far as what will be in that plan. And then the focus areas in Moorhead where um, some of the work will um, kind of emerge. So whether whoever's on the council, this information in this comprehensive plan will keep coming back. And then related to just how it informs the operations, once this is kind of, we have a, an idea of where this is at, then we'll use it to get together with the council to help in, to kind of get that strategic direction as far as how operations around our essential functions will look in our specific operations, sp strategic plan um, that kind of notifies these 280 full-time workers and some and, and the temporary part-time workers, but 280 folks that are out there doing any number of things from picking up the garbage to working at wastewater to taking care of the trees and the uh, urban canopy to, you know, police officers and firefighters and all of that kind of stuff. Um, 280, that's, that's really incredible 
um, when we consider some of the neighboring communities are well over a thousand uh, employees. So to their to their credit, we've got folks that are doing quite a bit. Um, so thank you. All right, thank you very much. We have a lot happening in the city. All right, and I don't believe we have an executive session tonight. So moving on, do we have any new business? Okay, and any other citizens who wish to address the council? All right, well then, meeting adjourned at 6.30 p.m. I think that's a record, one hour. Have a great night, Moorhead.